This episode is sponsored by Ronald Blue Trust. Have you always wanted guidance with your financial planning, but haven't been able to find someone who shares your biblical viewpoints? Ronald Blue Trust is honored to have the privilege of serving women from all walks of life, professionals, mothers, daughters, retirees, widows, and students across the nation by providing biblically-based wisdom for their finances. Ronald Blue Trust advisors work hard to provide as many useful resources as they can to guide you and your family in gaining clarity and confidence and leaving a lasting legacy. For more information about Ronald Blue Trust, visit forwardwomen.org slash ronblue. That's the number four, W-O-R-D-W-O-M-E-N dot org slash R-O-N-B-L-U-E. Welcome back to Work, Love, Pray, Real Talk, Grounded in Truth. I'm Jordan Johnstone. If there's one thing the pandemic and 2020 taught us, it's that everything can be changed in the blink of an eye. Uh, Things we all took for granted, like grocery store trips, our kids going to school, being able to go to restaurants or concerts, all of those normal things were removed from our lives for months, along with many other regular facets of our lives. And I know for me personally, one of the first things that I worried about with the pandemic was money. Would my husband still have his job? would I still have a job? How would we afford things if one of us got sick and wasn't able to work? Where would we find room in our budget for the inflated costs of things? And I know I'm not alone in feeling that. And actually, the Washington Post said in an article that around 25% of women in the workplace say they are worse off financially since the pandemic. And that's thanks to rising costs of everything. Uh, Then partnered that with having to juggle even more every day and then somehow squeeze in that full-time job that's supporting everything. When you're in the middle of or just coming out of a trying situation, you know, like pandemic, (laughs) hearing about financial planning and getting ready for retirement might kind of feel like salt in your wounds. But if money was discussed more openly and confidently, I feel like many of us might have had different reactions and experiences with the pandemic. The good news with anything financial is it's not too late to start. In your early 30s and you've never had a savings account, you can start now. Uh, Getting close to the top of that corporate ladder and feel like you're kind of a little bit behind on retirement planning, you still have time to get working on that. Joining me today to talk through financial planning and thinking ahead for retirement is Judy Holsey with Ronald Blue Trust, who is Forward's digital sponsor this month. Judy is a private wealth advisor with Ronald Blue Trust and has been in the corporate and financial world for decades. She has been through the ups and downs that money and financial stability often drags us through, and she is here to share her advice for planning for the future, no matter where you are in life. So Judy, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Jordan. It's it's special to be with you and your audience. (laughs) Well, coming out of the pandemic, what are some of the biggest reasons that people are coming to Ronald Blue Trust or maybe even other financial advisors, in your opinion? Yeah, yeah, I can speak uh, to Ronald Blue Trust. For other advisors, not so much. But the pandemic gave some people a moment to step back and rethink where they are Mm -hmm. and to see if they were getting what they needed. Yeah. And it became clear to people, uh, many people, as they paused to ask themselves, what do I need from my financial advisor? They found their current advisor could not give them what they needed. Mm. So a couple of examples of that, I would say, is uh, one Um, couple visited us and they saw they were not getting advice as it relates to God's word Hmm. because we are a Christian financial firm. In fact, we're the only national Christian trust department in the United States. Hmm. What I will say is I've heard people say they have no idea if their advisor is a believer or not, and they don't care if they are or not. To which I respond, are you kidding me? (laughs) Because I'm like, Okay, there's another thinking a believer different than the way we think for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another example was a client wanted help with their finish line. And what I mean by finish line is where the client says, how much money do I really need not to affect my lifestyle? But beyond that, what can I afford to give them, give away in our lifetime and enjoy seeing it being used? Hmm. So those are a couple of examples of where it came up for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, as a society, and I feel like the pandemic has maybe highlighted this, if this is something that's an issue. Do you feel like, though, 
our definition just as a whole of uh, the definition of wealth for us has been skewed. Yeah, it's been like that way for, yes, it's like that for a long, long, long <laughs> time. We're saturated in our culture with noise, mm. noise from business channels, billboard, newspapers, magazines, our friends, and our financial advisors. Mm. The industry as a whole doesn't make the most important thing the most important thing. Mm. And uh, money competes for our heart. You know, in Timothy, it says, um, it's not, it says, uh, it doesn't say money is the uh, all evil, but the love of money mm. is the root of all evil. So money does compete for our hearts, believers, non believers, everybody. And so the most important thing isn't which stock you hold or which mutual fund you buy. But we've made a multi-billion dollar industry out of those those concerns. Mm. Well, I mean, and we've all heard about financial planning. And I know for me, when I hear about it, I do think about like stocks and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going, oh, I don't even know. So I guess educate me, educate everyone that's listening. What does an actual financial plan look like? Yes, it's an important question because it's just a kind of a term that we throw out there and people don't mm -hmm. have any idea what we're talking about, like so many of the uh, words we use. <laughs> but a sage advisor at our firm taught me something special about Proverbs 16, 9. It says, a man plans his course, but the Lord establishes ways. Hmm. Meaning it's critical to have a financial plan. But once you have a plan in place, God begins to work and show up in amazing ways in our plan. Mm. So to understand where a financial plan fits in the context of your life, we want our clients to have confidence and a clarity around their finances. And I find people, no matter how wealthy they are, don't mostly have clarity or confidence around their financials. So mm. it happens with people with have, that have money and people that don't have money. Yeah. Uh, the five steps of a plan, I would say one is to help our client make their financial capital that's beyond what they pay for clothing or food or shelter to make it a non-issue so they can focus on the eternal, which is the most important. Mm -hmm. The second thing we do is we help clients understand the importance of investing, not just their financial assets, but also so their social, which is their character qualities necessary to build effective and be productive and their spiritual qualities. Mm -hmm. So it's just not the financial, it's the spiritual and the social as well. Uh, third, we help clients with the context of financial decision making. People are lost in swimming and making good financial decisions. And we want to help them with that. Four, most people put financial planning at the bottom of the pile. So it never gets done. Mm -hmm. So we want to help clients slow down their pace by simplify, simplifying their financial lives. And that's critical because we're all moving too fast. I heard a quote, I think it's by Carl Jung. It says, hurry is not an instrument of the devil. It's the devil. Mm. And that has spoken to me for 30 years and I still work at it. Mm. And then five, we help clients with accountability that leads to some peace of mind. We know our clients <clears throat> are prosperous and successful as they obey God and get involved in what's important to the Lord. Hmm. So I guess, you know, thanks to the pandemic, <laughs> a lot of us have had to go through career changes and it, it, you know, that could be something that you've instigated or maybe not. Uh, and that's a scary situation to be in. I mean, especially if you're leaving a job by choice um, or even, I guess, if you're leaving a job by choice and you and I had talked prior to this, and you had mentioned that you had a real conviction to leave a job in which you thought you'd be in for your whole career. 
So my question for you is this, when you have a conviction about something, especially pertaining to like your career or maybe something Mm -hmm. financial, but you don't feel financially secure enough to act on it, what should you do? Well, I've, I've changed careers twice in the last 12 years, Mm. not changed firms. I wouldn't say changed careers, but you know, you've got to pray and you got to prepare. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you jump and sometimes you wait. So 12 years ago, I left a company within, I've been there 23 years. I left within six months after mm-hmm. I was convicted about what they were asking clients to invest in. I was mm-hmm. like, I just can't do it. Either I'm going to be the president of this bank in Florida or I'm going to be gone. And I was gone in four months. Hmm. And I left with no salary, no benefits, and no clients. I was that serious about my conviction. And the day before I resigned, I was reading a book by Graham Cook. And he said, we don't um, go from failure to failure. We go from victory to victory. Hmm. And the other thing I read was in uh, Proverbs Proverbs 31 woman in I had a little note card that said, um, you know, strength and wisdom is her clothing. And I thought, I wonder what the rest of that verse says. Hmm. And it said, she will smile at her future. Hmm. And I would say that I went through blood, sweat, and tears uh, when I, after I made that move and just trying to survive till I had clients and all that. But yeah. I was, had so convicted about it, I did it. Hmm. So the second time was I, so the first time I jumped, the second time I waited. Mm. I knew I, five for five years, I knew I needed to leave that company. Mm. But I wanted to, I kept interviewing, interviewing one of my biggest clients left uh, because of what they saw. And so I said, I've got to leave, but I've got to, I just kept interviewing and interviewing off and on. And eventually I found Ronald Blue Trust. Hmm. And I uh, would say that it was painful. It was lonely. But I just kept on my knees Hmm. asking Lord to ask Seek and Knock to help me. So I would say stay hopeful as well and positive. I mean, just yesterday, Wally Funk was the female astronaut pioneer that trained in 1961 to go into space. And after her training, she could not go into space because she was a woman Mm. and she got to do it at age 82. That's awesome. I guess when you, when you started to feel the conviction that you wanted to leave, what went through your mind? Like as far as finances go, like had you done good? I mean, you're working in a bank, so I'm I'm just going to assume that you did, but like, I mean, were your finances in order? Did you feel like you kind of had that, security net um of no I, well, I did i feel like i had a security net yes and no i yeah. had you know typically the rule of thumb is you have three to six months of your salary right. saved mm-hmm. and i had a year's salary saved the gentleman i went to work for told me it'll take you six months and it took me way belong um six months and a year yeah. so mm-hmm. then i'm in to some of my retirement but i was like I know what I'm doing is the right direction. I'm not at the right place. I found out, gosh, within a few months after I got there, it wasn't the right place. Mm. And, you know, they said they were Christians and they weren't showing it to me. Mm. So, um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, so there's, there's a big, there's a big aspect of trust in that too. Um, you know, trust, trust that what you're hearing and what you're interpreting is correct, but then also trust to act on it. Yeah. And get wise counsel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so I think our listeners are probably a little bit all over the place uh, in terms of where they are both. I feel like in their careers right now, and definitely I think in financial planning. So uh, while we have you, I would love for you to share one piece of advice that you would give someone in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond pertaining to financial planning and just being financially secure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, it's hard to come up with one because (laughs) the starting place is the most important. Right. 
And uh, in my 20s, I would say always spend less than you make. Mm -hmm. Always spend. If you practice that, practice that, practice that. And the, I have to give you a second one in, in the 20s, but it's so easy to get in debt because you just got out of college. Mm -hmm. You just started working and you're like, oh, my goodness, I still finally have a paycheck, you know, and there's a lot of lending institutions that are happy to give you, uh, you know, mortgages, second mortgages on your home and credit cards. And it's hard to recover from that. Mm hmm. You know, so I would say uh, spend less than you make and stay out of debt Yeah, in your 20s. In your 30s, uh, this is a 20s and 30s thing. Take your savings on your overtime and get out of debt if you're in your 30s and you're in debt. And so that's really crit you're, uh, critical in your 30s to save, save, save. Mm. I like to see people start saving in their 20s. Because they have a big advantage because of their, their time in the, to be in the investment world mm -hmm. and earn more because of their, the timeline. Yeah. But those would be, I have to say, too. Spend less than you make and start saving, well, three, and stay out of debt. And what? And you and I, when we talked earlier, you had mentioned something about if you saved a certain amount when you were in your 20s, you would oh, have yeah, like yeah, X yeah. number of dollars. If yeah. you're 22 and you save till you're 32 and stop. Mm -hmm. And you put in two thousand dollars a year for those ten years, then a nut that's person one. Person two starts saving at age thirty-two, two thousand dollars until they're sixty-five. So big difference in ten thousand dollars versus thirty-two to sixty-five, yeah. saving two thousand a, a month a year. The person that started at twenty-two and stopped at thirty-two will have more money than the person that put in at 32 and save till they're 65. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. huge. That's yeah. So in your forties, I would say don't overfund your retirement mm -hmm. because I see a lot of people put all of their savings in their retirement plan and they don't have any savings outside. Mm -hmm. In your fifties, I would say uh, diversify your investments for sure. You need to make sure you're diversifying. A lot of people own their business and all their assets are tied up in that or they just don't have a good asset allocation. And then in your 60s, I'd say be generous. Hmm. Um, experience freedom and options as you grow older. And then we have one for our 80s is enjoy the trip. <laughs> so You earned it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so when it comes to retirement... Um, because ultimately, I mean, that's where we all want to head toward. I mean, I feel like that's where we're all working forward towards. Um, I feel like there are two big questions about it that we all will juggle with. Uh, and the question is, when do we retire and how do we retire? So <laughs> could you share maybe some cliff note thoughts on that? I, and, you know, no pressure, no pressure at all. Yeah, 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 no, none here. I would ask myself two questions. I would ask yourself, should I retire? Mm -hmm. And the other question is, can I afford to retire? Mm -hmm. Now, remember, age 60 and 65 are just arbitrary ages. There's really nothing in the Bible that specifically talks about us ever retiring. Right. And uh, Moses died at the age of 120. His eyesight was bright. And he was sharp and he had a skip and spring in a skip. <laughs> you want to save for retirement in case you can't work. Mm -hmm. But as you approach it, I would say it's not the end. It's the beginning. Mm. The next phase is just as important or maybe more important. The next phase of your service to God in his kingdom. Yeah. Many Christians I know quote the scripture, they want to be, hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. But what I love is Ephesians 2.10, where it says we are God's workmanship, created to do good works that he prepared for us before creation. Hmm. That I get excited about. <laughs> so. As we close, um, I have started asking our guests this, and I love ending with it. So I'm going to ask you, uh, if you could say only one thing to a woman in the workplace today, what would that be? 
Well, because I'm a financial planning firm, I'm going to give you financial planning advice because you'll get a perspective from everybody. But I would say make very sure you're with the right advisor. Uh, Most believers are not with someone that knows the word of God. And I know Christians say the last thing I want to do is work with a believer. And we've all been burnt with other believers that have hurt us in the name of Christ, which breaks my heart. But it happens. But I, I know most advisors couldn't find the book of Matthew. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say persevere in that. It's difficult to find a good, qualified advisor that cares more about you than what they're making. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this conversation with Judy. For more information about today's episode, go to forwardwoman.org slash Judy. That's the number four, W-O-R-D-W-O-M-E-N dot org slash J-U-D-Y. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to Work, Love, Pray on your favorite listening platform and leave a review. Your review will help more people discover Work, Love, Pray, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. As you move forward on your journey to work, love, and pray well, don't forget to make time for real talk grounded in truth.